There's a reason why there are cocktails that everybody knows the name of. Hurricanes, daiquiris, Mai Tais. Oh, careful. Aloha folks, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode with BG Reynolds and all the syrups that he sent to me. The pre-mixed jet pilot turned out to be a pretty tasty situation. This week, I wanna try something that I've never tried before. And it's kind of one of those lost ingredients of tiki, fashionola. The hell is fashionola? I, I really don't know. It's right here though. Let's learn about fashionola together. Cocktail syrup of passion fruit, and other tropical fruits. So a lot of times you see this in place of passion fruit syrup, sometimes grenadine, but it's its own thing. And I have no idea what this tastes like. Once again, we will be using BG Reynolds syrup and he calls this a long lost concoction crucial to drinks from the golden era of tropical cocktails. Passion fruit, cherries, and other flavors add a bit of zip to your cocktails and unlock long lost recipes from long ago. There is one cocktail that has devolved so far from what it started as, just like the Mai Tai, just like the daiquiri, it's the hurricane. Now you, you might be going, the hurricane, you're not gonna make a hurricane, are you? What, what are you making a, this is a tiki show. Hurricane's not tiki. The hurricane is from the 1940s and the story goes about the same way that it did for Don Beach. It was like whiskey and all of those spirits were really expensive, but rum was flowing like the s rivers of Appalachia. Rum was flowing like, rum was so plentiful that liquor distributors said, hey, if you want whiskey, you gotta take a lot of this rum off my hands. Buy a lot of rum from me and I'll give you some whiskey. So in the 1940s at Pat O'Brien's in New Orleans, Lewis Culligan, a bartender at Pat O'Brien's, came up with something using rum. And that was the hurricane. So this drink dates all the way back to tiki, pre-tiki eras and the use of a blend of rums, fresh fruits, and this magical fashionola kind of puts it in the lineage of tiki, if you ask me. But don't ask me, I'm just a guitar player and a fake bartender. They've even said that fashionola is perhaps a proprietary mix thought up from the bartenders or perhaps Vic himself at Trader Vic's. So hence more of the tiki connection. Another reason why I want to embark on this cocktail is because Fat Tuesday, the beginning of uh, Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras, is on February 12th. So this will be releasing right around that date. If you're watching this later, then you missed the party, but get the intention. Lastly, the reason why I wanna do this is because we all know that this cocktail is served in a very special glass. That glass is the hurricane glass for the hurricane drink. The reason why the glass is shaped like this because it's supposed to emulate a hurricane lamp from ships, like this vintage one that I have that is covered in spider webs, but it lives over there in the uh, Whitco bar. So you can see the shape. And then later on, the tiki world started putting these things on each table. And there's no way you could do this now because patrons would be trying to jam these oil filled lamps into their pants to run off and put them in their own tiki bars, uh, sadly. This is how it all translates to tiki. Hopefully you guys are all buying this and like the tiki lineage thing. If you're not, uh, you can leave or you can just watch me make a hurricane. You're already here, so, you know. A funny story about this thing though. When I was buying this in an antique mall, I was bringing it up to the register and I was walking up there, minding my own business, waiting for the register. And this thing, oh, it's on there good now. This thing fell off as it was falling. Instinctually, I put my foot out and kicked it back up and caught it in midair. I am not making this up. Every time I look at this, I go, you almost died. Isn't that crazy? I'm not like a hacky sack player either. I just, it was the last gasp for a desperate man. <laughs> crazy. Watch me just, I think this kind of lamp would have had a little tappa umbrella that goes on top. So if anybody has any idea where I can get one of those or I'll end up making it myself, but anyway. Thought this was an interesting story. Ties into the hurricane. And you can see the resemblance. Though my glass is not maybe a traditional hurricane glass, the shape is very close. And I'm trying to hide the logo here. I did get this at BB King's in Memphis years ago. I didn't want to go out and buy another hurricane glass because like, how often am I going to use this? We are going to do it like this. So you can barely tell. 
Now this is a simple cocktail as per the traditional recipe from the 1940s. It's just three ingredients. Lemon juice, fashionola, and a blend of rums. Today we're gonna to be using Smith & Cross dark Jamaican rum and Appleton 12. This is just something that I found in doing my research that somebody had used. So some recipes say a light rum and a dark rum. Some say a blend of dark rums. Some just say dark rum, but I've heard that this is a good version. So we're gonna try this tonight. But first, let's taste this Fashionola. Let me in. Another brand new bottle from BG Reynolds. Ooh. Oh, that's such an interesting scent. Let's see here. It's almost like raspberries and stuff, but you can taste passion fruit in there. That's really, uh, man, I just want to drink a bottle of this. Man, that is delicious. Wow. All right, let's make this drink. Now I'm excited. By the way, I have never had a hurricane before. So this is a bit of an adventure. That's really kind of the reason why I wanted to do this series anyway, is because I wanted to taste the drinks that I probably wouldn't normally order. I, I'm not gonna go out and order a hurricane. I think this version of the hurricane is probably better than anything you're gonna get, even at Pat O'Brien's these days. Now it's a big syrupy mix. That's that's kind of the reason why I always get scared. I get scared about daiquiris. I get scared about uh, margaritas. And uh, of course, Mai Tais. Who knows what you're gonna get when you order a Mai Tai. Same thing with a hurricane. I just expect a hurricane to be a big syrupy mess. We're gonna make it proper tonight. So we need two ounces of lemon juice. That is a half an ounce right there. Son of a bitch. We're gonna need another lemon, I think. Oh, maybe not. Maybe this is the juicy side here. Oh, wow. Almost. Oh my God, we're half an ounce away. And it's either I cut another lemon or we find that other half ounce in this thing. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Oh, we're so close. Okay. There it is. Two ounces of lemon juice. This goes here. Two ounces of Fashionola from BG Reynolds. Look at all of that goodness. Oh, a little more. Woo, woo, that's exciting. Exciting stuff. So we're mixing this berry flavor with the tartness of the lemon. Now here's where things get interesting. There are a few places in America that are kind of recognized as the drunkest places in America. Places like Laughlin, you know, like on the river, uh, Las Vegas and New Orleans like New Orleans. And I think it's because of this drink. This is recognized worldwide as the cocktail of New Orleans. And there is four ounces of rum in each one of these. No wonder people get trashed in New Orleans. Four ounces? Dude, that's like rum barrel territory. Okay, so we're gonna do a blend of Smith & Cross. Oh. Two ounces of that. And that'll give us that funky pot still taste. And the other rum that I read about is this Appleton 12 year. Now Appleton 12 year is supposedly one of the best dark Jamaican rums for mixing. Okay, let me in here. Brand new bottle and it's a cork. Good one. Mmm, very sweet. That smells delicious. It really smells good. Another two ounces. Okay. And there it is, the makings of a hurricane. And I'm afraid that it probably will be the makings of a hurricane with four ounces of rum in it. That is a one drink evening. Yeah, one drink evening. That'll get you. Okay, so what we are gonna do is find a tin to mix all this in. Where is the tin? Okay, we are gonna take this tin and fill it full of crushed ice. And again, we are using sonic ice for that perfect pebbly texture. Just the best ice you could ask for. A three and a half scoops of ice. Pour it in, smack it closed and shake. In editing, I usually cut the shaking way short. So in reality, I shake it for a long, long time because you wanna make sure that tin is super frosty, the drink's totally cooled. 
my biggest pet peeve is watching a bartender like lackadaisically shake something for a couple seconds and then pour your drink and you just go, yeah, good work. Okay, and we are going to pour it into the hurricane glass. Oh man, right to the brim. Look at that. Okay, we're gonna top it off with some more ice. Yeah, yeah, get that out of there. So already you can see that it's not that red color that you usually think of hurricanes as, which is exciting because I know that it's not gonna be a big syrupy mess. They do say to garnish it with an orange wheel. So we'll cut, uh, that wasn't a very good orange wheel. Either was that. What the hell? Okay. Hey, this guy doesn't know how to cut an orange wheel. Yeah, I do, but I just want it perfect. This is forever. This is for forever. Okay, and then I'm just going to put a little bit of a slice in it. Okay, and I'm going to put the orange wheel on like that. We're gonna grab a cherry from here. I don't know if they do this in New Orleans, but one of my favorite garnishes in Tiki is the Hurricane Blown Umbrella. See that? Like, whew. We're gonna stab the cherry with the wind blown umbrella and uh, just drop it in right in front of there. And so from the 1940s in New Orleans at Pat O'Brien's, this is the hurricane. This is my first hurricane. Okay, immediately it tastes like a tiki drink. It's the blends of rums, it's the mystery syrup here, the, the fashionola, and it's the lemon juice. Like, it absolutely tastes like a tiki drink to me. You definitely taste the rum. The rum is very much there, but whoever's idea it was to use the Smith and & Cross and the Appleton, it's a really good mix, really nice. So happy Fat Tuesday and happy Mardi Gras. This is gonna come back to get me. I know it. That is a, um, <clears throat> that's a boozy, boozy drink. This is a lot of drink, man. This is a big rummy drink. God, that's good. There's such a mix of fruits and stuff in the uh, Fashionola that it really cuts the lemon juice. It really makes it a, an easy and delicious drink to drink. I think if I were making this on a regular basis for myself, I'd cut everything in half. I mean, this is a, this is essentially a, you know, it's a, it's a big drink. Same thing with the Black Magic. Sometimes I like to make that thing in a half portion because it tastes great, but do you really need a giant bowl full of rum? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you do. I mean, sometimes you do, but not always. I would probably say the same thing about this. This is a good cocktail. It really is. Straw is already getting mushy. Remember Mushy the Straw? <laughs> I, think, I think he's back. How'd you get back here, Mushy? I left you in last week's video. Oh, for I can't use a straw. No, Surfside Sips. Okay, now this is a straw that I can get behind. This is from a company called Surfside Sips, and I swear I'm not trying to lead you down another commercial. I like I swear. But they make blown glass straws, and it looks like bamboo. Like, how rad is this thing? This is the first time I've used them. So this is very exciting. It works incredibly, like a straw made out of glass. Kind of feels like a crack pipe. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what a crack pipe tastes like, but you know, you can imagine. It's a great straw in a great cocktail. Man, this whew, hurricane. I'm feeling a little drunk, I'm feeling a little drunk. I love this straw. The straw is great. A long time ago, they sent me an affiliate link. I've never used that before. If you want to buy one of these Surfside Sips straws, I'll put the affiliate link in the description below. Never done this before. I wonder, uh, maybe I'll be a millionaire? Probably. Please, if you want one of these straws, use that link. I don't know what you're supposed to do after that. Hold on. I have an affiliate program if you're interested. Steve the bartender and the educated bar fly are both affiliates. Don't know who either of those dudes are. It gives you a personal promo code for 20% off and... Okay, the coupon code is BREEZEWAY. B-R-E-E-Z-E-W-A-Y. W-A-Way. One word, BREEZEWAY. If you like this straw, 
Jesus. So if you like this straw, visit the link down below, and then you can buy a straw just like this glass one that is kind of like a crack pipe, but it's totally not a crack pipe. It's a bamboo straw. Made out of glass, like a crack pipe. Before this drink totally grabs onto me, I wanna thank you so much for joining me on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click on the affiliate link with the coupon code BREEZEWAY if you like these straws. I do, I like the straw. Also, be sure to go and visit BG Reynolds to buy some of their syrups. And that's all, folks. That's all, folks. Aloha, folks. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode. What was last week's episode? Oh, we did the premix. I hope you guys la I hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode with the BG Remel. Let's just start this over. The uh, pre-mixed Jet Pilot. Is that what it was? Yeah. The hell is this stuff? Gold from the tombs. What are you talking about? Rum was flowing like blood from the... <laughs> can't say anything there at all. What is, what is bountiful? Rum? So in the 1940s at Pat O'Brien's in... Where the f*** is that? Lewis Culligan figured out a cocktail to make with all of this rum that, he, that landed on him. Ah, oh, And this magical... What's it called again? So thus, another warming its way in... Warming its way? The other reason why we're gonna do this cocktail is because Fat Tuesday is on February 16th. 12th. Get out of here, car. Is a like a jet going by? So this is like a, a bit of an adventure. Two ounces. Fashionola from BG Rent. Get out of here. What's with all these cars? And so from the 1940s at Pat O'Brien's in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's wrong. What is going on here? Oh yeah. Whoever's idea it was to use the Smith and Cross and the Appleton in here, super good idea. Ah! Stop it. There's probably, what are the other drinks that have been bastardized over the years? Pina Colada probably. It was probably a really delicate drink when it was formulated really delicate and tasty, and then over the years, cruise ships destroyed it. <laughs> if you've noticed, this is the second video in a row, it's just been me. Just me and you, us, together. There's no reason for that. I intend on bringing more guests onto the show. It's just, uh, you know, I don't go out of my way to book them. If I have an idea and they're available, then we'll make something happen, but uh, fear not, there'll be more guests among us. Is this thing already getting to me? Well, if I drank a fourth of it already, Maybe a fifth of it. It's almost an ounce of rum. So yeah, it probably is on its way. So I've been experimenting with the idea of doing tiki mugs, maybe bringing back the glassware. You guys into that? Let me know in the comments below. Should we do another run of the glassware? I know a lot of people didn't get an opportunity to buy any. And then also, maybe it's time to do t-shirts. Why not? Merchandising. We need to do a t-shirt. Black? Black or white? Black or white? Probably black. Oh, folks, be sure to keep an eye out for the Deke Dickerson music video that I produced. It'll probably be out in in a week. Keep an eye out for that. It's rad. Stoked on it. Okay, well, that, I think that's all. Once again, I want to thank BG Reynolds for the use of his Fashionola syrup. If you are interested in uh, BG Reynolds products, go visit their website. They were gracious enough to dump a ton of syrup on me. They didn't dump syrup on me. That sound funny though. They were gracious enough to donate a bunch of syrups to me and I wholeheartedly endorse the brand. I think they make incredible stuff. Very true to the original intent of Tiki. So, BG Reynolds. Oh man, this logo keeps spinning around. But I'm so embarrassed to be, like usually I like to get vintage glassware or whatever, but this is the only thing that I had that was close to a hurricane glass. And I went to Memphis like, how many years ago was that? I don't know. Sun Studios, Rock and Roll Museum. Yeah, Memphis is rad. I really enjoyed that. That's where I met an old black dude at a uh, juke joint, like an old blues hall, right? That had been around since like the turn of depression, depression era. And uh, I think I was turning, oh, I was turning 30. Ooh, 
So that was 12 years ago. And uh, I remember this old black dude going, you just, you turning 30? And I was like, yep. And he goes, uh, you know, when you turn 30, everything goes bad. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you can't walk straight. You can't see straight. Everything hurts all the time. And I was like, holy smokes. And he was like impeccably dressed in like 1940s stuff. Nice guy. I don't hurt that much. I don't hurt at all. I can still surf pretty well, pretty well. It's all relative, right? Aloha.